Hello, Christian neighbors. Um, I'm going to attempt once again to cut this video down by uh, sticking to the material that I have and and not uh, and not positing. Is that right? Not going, not bringing in thoughts that just come randomly to my head, which is difficult for me to do because that's what that's what happens to me. I just thoughts fall fly into my head, and sometimes they fly out of my mouth quicker than I can uh, quicker than I can stop them. But um, last time I tried to cut it down, I tried to cut it down from thirty minutes to twenty minutes, and when I did that. It wound up being 45 minutes. So I sort of went the other way on that one. Well, on this one, I'm going to try to keep it right at 20 minutes. Um, today, we're going to talk about the phrase, let go and let God. Now, this phrase is a rather delicate phrase, but it's one that that I I have to hold, I have to have to pull hold, hold myself back. What's the word I'm for? Restrain myself a little bit because I've heard this pretty much my whole life being raised in the South in, in North Carolina, um, and I never really understood it. But we're going to get into it. Just like I always do, we're going to compartmentalize these things. First, we're going to look at the grammar. Then we're going to look at the, um, the scripture. And then we're going to look at the application of the same. So, true or false, let go and let God. Is it possible to let go and to let God? If it is, what does that mean um, to let go and let God? What is the end result? What's the point? What's the purpose? Um, to let it go and let God. A. Grammatically speaking. The verb. Let go and let God. Go being the verb. God being a noun. Personal. So, the it, it, letting go is the action. Okay. So the understanding is that is that you, you in in your letting go, God is going to catch it and He's going to take it away from you. That's the assumption. That's not what the that's not what the language says. And I understand it's supposed to be uh, catchy and cliche and all of that. I get it. I do. But. The whole let go and let God thing is really, um, it's more magic. It's more, uh, I'll give it over to God, and then God will take take it, and he'll deal with it, and we won't have to worry about it anymore. Now, one of the biggest problems is that this phrase has been used so much, that it's lost any meaning that it ever might have had in the first place. And it can be used from splinters to burying children. And that's a, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge wide variety of things between those two, between a splinter in your toe and burying a, a child or a spouse, uh, let go and let God can, it can mean any any anything within that realm. Further, um, letting it go uh, is also assuming that God wants it, and uh, that that then makes God your your uh, own personal. Uh, trouble genie that is of course as soon as, uh, as soon as I start recording it's 
starts pouring down rain. So uh, that also makes God your personal trouble genie, where you can rub the lamp. God comes out. Note also that it's not specific. It's not Christ. Uh, let go and let God. So God pops out. You dump your problems on Him. He's like, gotcha. He takes them back into His lamp, and you don't have to worry about Him anymore. Moral th therapeutic deism. Uh, the other thing, it, uh, but when people say it in sincerity, it's I, I, I then then I have a a personal. It, it it pains me to correct them. It pains me to correct someone who is who says. I've, I've handed it, I've handed it over to God. I've I've given it over to God. Uh, I've let it go um, because I believe that they're sincere in their pain. Now, of course, I'm talk I'm on the end of the spectrum uh, where the verbs are very deep and 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 very dark. Uh, the, the deep cuts, the, the wounds, the burying of the children and the burying of, of, of parents and, and spouses and um, adultery on uh, that's been done against you or that you have done against your spouse or um, pornography, uh, alcoholism, whatever whatever it is, whatever that you're struggling with. Um, that is, if it was as easy to hand it over, let go, and let God be God, which doesn't make sense anyway, that then you don't have to worry about it anymore, and that's not human nature. And the assumption that that, that God wants you to forget about it is, is rather bold on our part, I think. Uh, further, letting it go may not be the healthiest thing for us. Now, of course, something like pornography, alcoholism, uh, adultery, something like that, uh, all of the, those sins, you know, s s not sinning is, is of course, and, and, and uh, when we sin, be, being forgiven, uh, repenting and being forgiven, of course, uh, is not what I'm talking about. But what about the struggle, that the, the, the everyday struggle, the struggle with mourning, um, the struggle with friends? with your spouse uh, as iron sharpens iron um, in other words the sharpening of a Christian does not take place by giving the Christian a soft place to land all the time sometimes we have to go face down in the mud um, and you sometimes you let go and you let your face fall directly into the mud um, St. Paul tells us of the thorn uh, in his side that was sent by God. Um, and so, so it's not always it, the goal. The goal of, of the Christian life is not to just alley oop your troubles to God and let God stuff it in there, and and then the, you know we win, we win the the life game, the game of life. We win. God dunked it. Of course, that's that's not the Christian life, and and we all we also have this. This is the second category. Uh, we're gonna have four. I, I I made room for another one. We have these social constructs, and in these are contracts. In these social contracts, we kind of agree, we agree to act in a, a in a civil way. Oftentimes, that civil way calls for um, uh, us to not be genuine. And I'll give you an example. Actually, a lot, lot of them. You, you're at Food Line, Piggly Wiggly, whatever you have at, uh, at your where you're at. You will come up to the clerk and they ask you, Hey, how are you doing today? And you say, Oh, I'm fine. Even though someone just ran to the back of your car two hours ago, you're not fine. You're angry. 
uh, you're thinking about insurance. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. You're really pent up, and so you, when, when they say how are you doing, you say oh good, I'm I'm fine. It, it, that just that's just social protocol. That's just the contract that you have with the person because you know that the person doesn't really want to know. Uh, they they don't care. Um, if, if you don't believe me, try it sometime when you go to to a clerk and, and then they say hi, how are you? Uh, try to, to, to let go and let clerk. Try that sometime. Well, somebody hit my car and I, now I have to file insurance and whatever. And this, this, the lady's like, I just wanted to sell you a cabbage. Um, well, that likewise, we have, we have the kind of social contract with our pastors. And because we're so used to having those kind of social contracts, so when your pastor asks you how you're doing and you have just reconciled with the spouse, for example, um, and, you, and you say, good, good, even though you split back up or you've gotten into an argument and you're close to splitting back up, but you don't want to bother your pastor with this or you don't want to bother your pastor with your sins um, and your struggles, then you just end up clerking him. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, and oftentimes that can lead to the disingenuous part of let go and let God. And that's this. Well, I, I'm fine, Pastor. I've given it over to God. As if it's gone. As if it no longer bothers you. As, 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 if, as if you no longer mourn. As if you no longer struggle. As if you've forgotten as if you can forgive and completely forget in this lifetime. Um, now, under with that understanding that forgetting does go along with forgiving, but forgetting doesn't mean that you have forgotten the incident. It means that you look at it through sanctified eyes. Um, now, the, uh, and that brings us to the, theo to the theological part of, of this, the big theological part where we're going to look at some scripture. Uh, and, and, and that is the who, who is running the verbs, of course. Um, if you are not the passive one, then you're the wrong one. Um, if you're doing the giving, then uh, and, you, and you don't have God doing the taking, then you have works righteousness or truly, uh, moral therapy um, and, and uh, I, 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 okay but let's just let's get to this Basic, basically um, let go and let God is shows us that Christianity is more of a therapist couch than it is Christ's cross um and that we rely on God in order to work out our, our psychological um, needs and wants uh, in order to live a better life now. But And that's, that's what's wonderful about, about being Lutheran. And also what kind of stinks about being Lutheran is that we live by the cross uh, and the shadow of the cross, the theology of the cross. And that's that in the midst of this life, you're going to have pain um, and you're going to have struggle and you're going to have things that even if you have the thickest skin um, will you will get swept off your feet uh, I don't care if you are the most orthodox pastor um, or uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, what do you call them Christmas and Easter Christian. Um, life is going to knock you down. It's going to hurt you. And you won't be able to let it go. You won't be able to give it to God. Uh, and perhaps God doesn't want to take it anyway. And that's a big statement that I'm making. I realize that. But let's look at this. Uh, if God wanted Christianity to be a therapist a therapist couch 
um, then that would make my job a therapist. That's not how God works. God makes pastors uh, dispensers of the gifts, the means of grace, the preaching of the word, the administration of the sacraments. Um, that makes me a, uh, a washer and a feeder. Um, that through God's word, uh, your sins would be forgiven. So, that may, and, and those things have you clutched to the cross uh, and, and, and embrace the cross and be able to face the struggles that happen in the midst of, of this life. Um, and, for, and we're going to look at 2 Timothy real quick, real quick, really quickly. So look at some of these examples. Then you, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, that right, that right there is the opposite sounding of let go and let God. Then you, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in, sh share in sufferings as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlists him. An athlete is not... Did you hear that? That's three syllables. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is... Uh, the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Uh, think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. So there, I mean, the, the, the life of a Christian is not meant to be an easy road. It's a bumpy one, and it's one filled with rocks and, and valleys and, uh, and uh, Michigan-type roads uh, with with painful falls and uh, face plants and uh, wallowing in the mud. It's, it's, it's not being able to let it go. And suffering like a good soldier in Christ and fighting the good fight of faith. Um, confess your sins. And he who is faithful and just will forgive your sins. And in none of that are you guaranteed therapy. You're only guaranteed everlasting life. So yeah, we struggle here in the church militant. But we look forward to the church triumphant. It's not two churches, but one. Okay, let end again. 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that all that in the inner race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run in, so run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do not perceive a, a they do not receive a perishable wreath, but an imperishable one. So do not run aimlessly, uh, beating the air as one or as do not I don't like this translation I'm sorry uh, this beating the air do not box I'm just going to read what it says um, I do I, I do not box as one beating the air and here here's here's the issue but I discipline my body and it's actually I I beat my own body uh, to keep it under control, lest after proclaiming to others I myself would be disqualified for the prize. So you see, we we come to to even the point where uh, where we we train ourselves 
to know that life is not going to be easy, uh, so that when these things come, uh, we're not aimlessly swatting at problems, but we're hitting them head on and taking them to Christ in prayer. And that's because that's where our war lies. It lies um, in the temptations of this world, the prayer to God, the reconciliation between Christ and uh, between God and man through Christ, the forgiveness of sins for you. You can't let it go uh, at period. It's just something nice to say. And then we assume that God is going to pick it up and take it into his magic lamp so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, while Christ says not to be anxious about tomorrow, understand this. We have to be prepared. Christ will take care of all things. We look to the imperishable. We do not, we do not uh, train our bodies for a wreath that is perishable, but is imperishable. Philippians 4.13, that, uh, that is so quickly tattooed on the bicep or wherever. Um, I can do all things through Christ who that, that strengthens me. It, besides the context, uh, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at, at another one. It, right there in uh, Philippians that probably won't show up very often in tattoos. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, th that uh, text in particular in Philippians has... Uh, for some, for some Lutherans, has been an issue because they think, well, then this is this means that we have to work out our salvation. We have to work toward our salvation. That's not what it means. Working out our salvation uh, in fear and trembling is to further dive into God's word, to further be, uh, to further go go to church, to further receive the forgiveness of Christ when you sin, repent, receive forgiveness, etc. Uh, that struggle, that theology of the cross, the tentatio, the, uh, the, 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 the constant grinding of it being, having to be uh, perfect every single day and failing at it. When Christ says, be perfect, even as your Father is perfect, He expects perfection of you, and you're not. And if you think that you can let that go, and that God will pick it up, it's not going to happen without repentance and absolution. So there's letting it go like this is not going to happen. It's going to come back and you're going to have to start right over. Really what you end up doing is forgetting for a while until the pain returns. And, 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 and that's the thing. That's what I don't like about it, but I really understand why people want to cling to it because they don't want the struggle. They don't want the hurt. We, I, don't, I don't want the struggle. I don't want the hurt. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want people to... I want people to think good things of me. I don't want people to think bad things of me. Um, uh, for my sins, I, I desire for people to, to, to forgive me. Um, I... I I crave people's uh, 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 approval. Um, well, you know what? That's not going to happen. It's not always going to happen. I can't. I get reminded all the time. You can't make everybody happy. Well, that's. Not, I'm not even trying to make everybody happy. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to be faithful and have people uh, respond faithfully. And I have to realize that that doesn't always happen. I don't always uh, respond faithfully. Uh, I am a sinner. Uh, and like and likewise, I am I am on the same Michigan dirt road that you are, um, the dirt road that was probably once asphalt. Um, I'm in the same mud that you are. Uh, I trip and fall the same way that you do. We struggle together as the church. 
And so when you say things like, well, I'll let go and I'll let God, you're actually excluding me as your brother to help you bear the burden. So now you've sinned against me. So share your burdens. Share your burdens with your brother. Don't let go and let God, because God may not even want it and want you to have it. You can't forget it. It can be forgiven. But help share it. But, but help uh, allow your brothers and sisters to help you bear the burden. Letting go and letting God is false because it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make sense. In, instead, kneel, repent, be forgiven, and find comfort in Christ's forgiveness. And in that, there is comfort for the next life. That's not to say that it's going to be easy. I don't have the therapeutic answer. But the Christian life is a cross and not a couch. And so we take comfort in the words of Jesus. Even when our face meets the rocky road instead of the pillow, we take comfort in the words of Jesus. When we hear things like, Be still and know that I am God. It means that what we do is we be still and we look at the verbs of God. Be still and look. Christ is born. Christ is uh, uh, Christ has, has shown himself fit for us through miracles. Christ has uh, has been delivered over to uh, unto death. He has been our sacrifice. He has risen from the dead. He has ascended into heaven. Um, he sits at the right hand of God and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Be still and know that your salvation has been won for you by Christ. Don't let go. Be still and look at how God has worked out your salvation by Christ through the means of grace. Thanks be to God. I think that's pretty close. The peace of the Lord be with you.